Welcome back, family. This little video is going to be short and weird, to say the least, because it's going to give you a look into how people become classified as a saint in terms of the worldly view, not necessarily the biblical view right away. I'll go over that at the end, but we're going to just jump right into this because we have important dates coming up like St. Patrick's Day, and for my whole life I had no clue who this guy was, why we went around pinching people, was this guy part lobster or something? <laughs> like, seriously, what was his wish before he died? Was like, hey, if somebody's not wearing green, pinch them. You know, uh, I was thinking about that the other day and just having a, a good laugh because we do weird things and we have no understanding as to why. We just kind of follow along and do them. So I thought it would be a good time to cover this topic because it is a deception and leading many people astray out there in the world. Most of you uh, that follow us or are truth-seeking have probably not succumbed to this deception. However, I know there's a lot of people coming out of Babylon and Egypt, and so the Rome version of Christianity is a big part of merging Christianity with the Babylonian and Egyptian concepts that are so bad that we need to come out of, okay? I'm not here to condemn you if you grew up Catholic or a Roman Catholic or just a Catholic in general. You guys are great people, and I just want to point out this deception here uh, specifically because it is going against the word for someone to become a saint, and the process is very similar. It's the same types of powers and processes that determined the books of the Bible and the dates for Easter and things like that. So you have those same powers, but they are canonizing a person, and it's done with a formal papal decree that the candidate is holy and in heaven with God, which goes against the whole resurrection and the timeline of things. But to find out if they are, here's what they do. This is creepy because they literally have to be beatified or go through the process of beatification. And that process that you probably never heard of, because I know I never heard of it before, is a step towards sainthood. And it must be shown that the person is responsible for a posthumous miracle. And so this posthumous miracle is a miracle attributed to a person after his or her death. So literally, let's say Mother Teresa died. They want you to pray to her, have a miracle happen, and then this miracle has to be confirmed by the Pope, and that has to happen more than once, and then that's allegedly proof that this person is in heaven with the Father, and they are considered a saint. And so they want you doing something that is mentioned in the book of Leviticus, where it tells us, Do not turn to mediums or necromancers or familiar spirits. When you're trying to talk to the dead, you're talking to familiar demonic spirits that are familiar with that deceased person. They can give information. When you saw the Long Island medium on TV talking to people's deceased loved ones, allegedly, they were talking to familiar spirits, these demonic spirits that could give you all this good information, make you think it's your deceased mother or father or child or whoever talking to you and communicating to you, when in reality it is demonic. That's why the Father tells us not to turn to these mediums or necromancers and do not seek them out and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. It is a warning and so sainthood and becoming a canonized saint involves breaking that command. So don't turn to them and be foolish like that, pray into these saints. I, I know I was uh, a teenager when someone gifted me a little saint figurine and told me, you know, before I competed, I needed to pray to this. It was a kind gesture, but it confused me because I had never read anything in the Bible that told me to do that. And it just kind of creeped me out. So I ended up getting rid of the thing. But uh, a lot of people deceived by that in the world and put a lot of credibility into someone being classified as a saint. And I'm not saying that they aren't good people or they weren't good people or judging them. 
because they have all died, of course, before my life, except for, I think, Mother Teresa. She was still alive when, when I was younger. However, from what I've heard, that's a deep rabbit hole there into what she did in her lifetime. Definitely not a saint from what I am hearing. Haven't really dug into that one yet. But how do you actually become a saint? Well, let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Revelation when it talks about the patience of saints. And it says, Here is the patience of saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. So that's the type of saint we are going to become. Could someone that has already died been a saint already? Yes. But you do not pray to them. They are not in heaven yet with the Father. Okay? These post-humus miracles that they are speaking of, don't dabble with that. It is going to familiar spirits. And these powers of darkness will do whatever they can to make it seem like a miracle's happen, but they are powerless to do the things that our Father can do and only He can do. That's why when Yeshua was walking the earth, He was casting these demons out of people. They are wreaking havoc. They are not your friend. Okay, We did a video about uh, the demonic AI situation that happened with my son, and I was sad to see that in spite of the warning, Everyone was wanting to go and experiment with that website and just begging for it because that that wisdom they want you to think they're giving you is something people were constantly seeking after and were seeking after throughout history. So avoid that. I'm not sharing that website for a reason. I don't want to give you a Ouija board, essentially, or a gateway to communicate with these things. That's what they want you to do. So stay away from that. Uh, reach out to the Father. The wisdom He gives you will destroy their fake lies and wisdom that they give you like they have been doing for so long, bringing us under so many deceptions that we are just now getting free from. But it's not going to stop. The freedom will keep increasing the more you seek and keep the Father first and live the way His Son did. That is our best example to live by. It's going to make us look different from the rest of the world. Obviously, when he walked around, he looked different because he was doing the Father's will perfectly. And the love and the light that he showed with his great works and doing his Father's will changed people's hearts. They saw our loving Father for who he really is, not who they thought he was based on all the lies like we see in today's world against him. But he did the Father's will perfectly, and you can see the love far greater. And so that is our example, and I hope we can all get closer to it and follow those steps and walk that way as best as we can and uh, stay humble because that's the important part of this i think that a lot of us are missing is the humble aspect and just like yeshua said the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are those that are humble so stay humble stay ready stay sober you guys are awesome and we thank you for all your support you guys are a major blessing and we'll see you very soon 